Today I want to speak about how can I be saved? You see, the, uh, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas one simple question in the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 30. He asked, Sir, what must I do to be saved? This is a question maybe which is running in your mind. What must I do to be saved? I really want to be saved. And you know, Paul and Silas just responded in a very simple analogy of what salvation is. He said, it's all about faith. In the book of Acts 16 verse 31, he said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. But now here comes the biggest problem. People wonder, what am I going to believe? What is this thing about Jesus that I need to believe? Remember in John 3.16, it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. So in simple terms, what am I believing? Does it mean that I just believe that Jesus is God? I believe that Jesus was here on earth. Do I believe in something about Jesus? What exactly am I believing? This is the biggest question and the reason why many people have never gotten saved, they don't know what to believe about Jesus. Now, let me tell you, the Bible tells us uh, that even demons believe and they tremble. Does it mean that demons are saved? No, they're not saved. It is not just believing that Jesus is God, which gives you salvation. It's believing the work that Jesus did for us. What did Jesus do for us? You see, there's something that he did for you and for me. And understanding the reason why he had to do this work, which gives you salvation. So what did Jesus come to do? That is the thing that we need to believe. We see that a man was created in, uh, by God and he was in a perfect state. Adam was perfect when he was created by God. He had three parts, uh, body, soul, and spirit. They were all perfect. But when Adam decided to disobey God, uh, his spirit died, so he remained with two parts out of three. So you see, that is imperfection. And the spirit is the one which connects man to God. It's just like uh, the way I have this mobile phone. It has the body, it has applications, Facebook, YouTube, and all that. Those that we can call them the soul, okay, and the body. And then it has network, which is called the spirit. And that network is what was cut. So now... After man disobeyed God, the network was cut. So he could not be able to hear any more directly from God. He could not be able to fellowship any more with God. So God has always been trying to find a way of how he can bring back this relationship. And you see, unless you have this relationship back, then you cannot be able to be saved. And you understand, <clears throat> people will say, oh, I'm not involved in this. How does it involve me? That was between God and Adam. No, my friend, we are all infected <laughs> with sin. The book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Through Adam, we have all become sinners. We are all, all have this disease. is an hereditary kind of a disease called sin. You see the point? And even in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 20, it says, For there is not a just man upon the earth that does good and sins not. There is not even one person who does not sin. And do you know one thing, friends? If you just say, I'll just throw it in the bucket and just uh, stay my way and just concentrate with my own th things, the Bible says there are consequences of you not wanting to Come back to God. Remember, God is a creator. God is the giver of life. And if you stay away from him, then you cannot be sharing and having his life when you're staying away from him. And God says, okay, you don't want me? Let me tell you the consequence of the sin. Romans 6 verse 23, it says, for the wages of sin is death. You see? So if you don't want to be back to God, who is the giver of life, who created you, then he will pick back his life. The wages of sin is death. And not only just death of the body, but death eternally. There is what we call the second death. And I'm not going to get uh, down to that because of time. Now, how do I be saved? How will I escape all these as atrocities? The Bible is very clear. Uh, in the book of Romans 6, 23, where it has told us that the wages of sin is death. But the second part of that verse tells us some good news. It says, but the gift of God, but the gift of God, there is a gift. 
that is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So God tells you, if you want this to die and, uh, you know, get finished because I'll pick my life if you don't want me. But then there is an option out here. There is a gift that I'm giving you, which is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Then now, who is this Jesus and why is he coming to give me eternal life? My friends, this eternal life is the good news. Is the gospel, what we call the gospel, the good news. The good news about what? About what God, how God had mercy for us and send his son to come and die for us. So you see, Jesus, Jesus is son of God. He came from God and he's God himself. But God decided because man cannot save himself. He is a sinful ma a person who is doing so many wrong things. Let me do this. Let me send my own son to come and get the body like of a man. The Bible says a body was prepared for me. Jesus, a body was prepared for him. That he came here and he lived 33 years without doing any single sin. So that whosoever will believe in him after he has died and rose again, then he will have that life. Jesus never um, required to die, never needed to die. But he died so that he would replace himself with you. It's like he took his death. You are supposed to be on that cross dying for your sins. But Jesus died instead of you so that if you believe then you will have his life it is as simple as that so all you need to do is hear this good news then understand why did jesus have to die he had to die so that you can get his life and he can get your death you understand the point there because jesus is god then what do i need to do then once you have understood this because unless you understand you can never believe so once you have understood is when you will believe because the Bible says we believe from our hearts. Romans 10.10. 10, we believe from our hearts unto righteousness. We become righteous by believing uh, what Jesus did for us. And then confession is made unto salvation. What are we confessing? It's just like in a relationship. I know God. I've messed up. It is true. I've been this kind of bad person. But today I've heard what you did for me. Jesus, I've heard what you did for me. And today, let's start a new relationship. So confession is basically telling Jesus, from today, may you be my Lord and Savior. May you be the one who guides my life. May, you, may we start afresh. And the Bible says, those who come to Jesus, he will in no way cast them out. You see the point? So once you have heard the gospel, you have understood it, and then you have believed then all you need to do is tell Jesus, Jesus, I've heard for sure you gave yourself for me. And today I receive you by faith. You see, people will say, oh, but I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know how to get this faith. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you hear what Jesus did for you, how God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son to come and die for you, and then you understand and you believe, then faith comes in. You know, believing is basically faith, trusting. You only trust someone after you have known them well. You cannot just pick a woman from the street and say, from today I'm married to this lady. You have to understand her so that now you can have faith that she can be a wife. So before we believe in Jesus, we have to know him, to understand him. Then from knowing and understanding him, then now we can make him our Lord and Savior. So salvation is very simple. Five parts. One, you have to accept that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. All right? And you know that the consequences of sin is death. That's the first part. The second part is that you have to hear the gospel. How Jesus died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news. He did this for you. Then you have to understand why Jesus. It is because Jesus is the son of God. He came from God, sinless to the earth, and lived 33 years of his life without doing any single sin. So that once he dies, he will die a perfect person to be the a propitiation, the, 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 the atonement for your sin. Then after you understand, then you believe, faith comes by hearing and hearing. And then you confess. You confess and tell Jesus, Jesus today, be my Lord and Savior. I've accepted what you did for me. Now from today, I have become a new person. He says, already salvation is given. It is for you to pick. It is for you to pick. He's not telling you, ask me. No, pick by faith. Pick by faith. And the only way you can pick is by believing. 
I don't know if this made sense to you. And I don't know if you are saved.